Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video we're going to do something completely insane. We're going to take a fully graphical game written purely in C-Shop and we're going to compile it into a self-contained application, a native application that doesn't need the .NET runtime installed to run. And we're going to not only have it be a self-contained game, but also end up with something less than 2 kilobytes. That is right. And if it sounds, again, insane is because it is. In this video, I'm going to show you how that is possible and why I think it's something very exciting for .NET. If you like a lot of content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe for more training. Check out my courses on DomeTrain.com. Now, before I move into the code, I want to let you know that this video is based on a blog post and the whole idea is based on a blog post from Michal Strawolski. Sorry if I butchered your name. Michal is a .NET compiler engineer at Microsoft and he also authors the B flat project, which will eventually get its own video because it's a, just an insane project on its own, right? But if you're more of a blog person, I'm gonna put a link in the description, go check the blog out if you prefer to read. In this video, I'm going to walk you through what's in the blog. So choose your own path if you want to. So what do I have here? Well, I used Michal's GitHub repo to pull out this game and it's called a mini maze. Now the game itself is very basic as you might imagine. I'm not going to show you the code yet because I don't want you to have a stroke. What I'm going to do is just run the game. So I'm going to say just .NET run and the game will run. And as you can see, the game is very basic. It is a graphical game and I can move around, you know, Doom style or Wolfenstein 3D style. And there's collision, as you can see, some basic collision. And I can move around. And as you can see, I kind of walk into a maze. And that is basically that. There isn't much to it, but it is a fully working maze game, I guess. And as you can see, I'm getting lost in the maze. And I found this yellow box. But if I stop this, I can show you the code. And, but, uh, okay, if it doesn't look like C sharp, it's because, uh, I mean, technically it is but it's pushing it a bit. Uh, you can tell by the fact that the class itself, the program class is unsafe or marked as unsafe. And then we have lots and lots of maths that I do not understand. All this code will be in the blog post, but this is not your typical C sharp application. Nonetheless, this runs as a game. And as you can see, we have some win32. Why am I even showing this? This is not like nobody should ever really do this, but you can. You have an application that's very optimized to do graphical stuff in a very, very basic way without any dependencies. More importantly, nothing was used here in terms of libraries for this graphical application to work. This is just a .NET 8 EXE and that's it, which in its own right is just insane to me. Now, if we go ahead and we build that project, just say, you know, go ahead and build it. And in fact, I don't just do .NET build, but I do .NET publish, which by default is in release mode. Then we're going to get this uh, publish folder over here. Let's go here. And then in here, we have this maze.exe, which runs our game, as you can see, and I can walk around. And that is 138 kilobytes. However, that depends on the runtime I have installed on my machine. This is not a self-contained application. If I didn't have .NET 8 installed on my workstation, it wouldn't be able to run. So this isn't good enough for us. We want a self-contained application. How do we do this? Well, we have a couple of options. First, on a very high level, and I'm going to go into the terminal to do this, you can use the publish single file equals true, and that will make a single file uh, for Windows for the specific environment we're compiling for, in this case, x64. So if I go in this path now, you're going to see this exe, maze.exe, which is again, the same game. I can still play around and run, but this also contains the whole .NET runtime, so it is 66 megabytes. It's not going to cut it for what we're trying to do. So how can we take this a step further where we can actually trim? By trimming, we can just remove some unused things because we don't need the whole runtime to run this game. We only need what the code in this game is calling directly or indirectly. So the things that it's calling are also calling. It's a bit of a tree structure. You wanna shake off all the branches that you don't need basically. Now the first approach we can follow is we can actually compress and enable compression in that single file. This is not idle trimming, this is just compression. So it takes longer to build, but we do get an application half the size and it is still running no problem at all, as you can see over here. But what if we also trim it? So we have the public single file true and enable compression in single file true, but I can also say publish trimmed. 
and that is true and if i do that again this will be very quick and i had a bit of a spelling mistake here i said publish timed it is trimmed so i ran it again correctly and now this was published trimmed so as you can see from 64 to 34 to now 10 megabytes which is far off the two kilobytes i promised you but this is where native aot comes in because this is still a full runtime packaged application but it's still at its core a dotnet application so how do we compile this or publish this into a native application the same way a go or a rust application will compile into well we simply say dotnet publish and we pass the publish aot equals true flag so if i do that then we're going to compile a native executable we're generating native code for our environment if i go in here and i delete all the debug stuff we go to 1.3 kilobytes and again this is a fully native self-contained game in .NET so from 64 to 32 to 10 and now 1.3 megabytes very very good now the only way to move forward is actually pass some flags towards the building approach again and those flags are again we're keeping the publish AOT now we're saying optimization preference is the size so I want a smaller application don't have stack trace support, enable invariant globalization, and then use system resource keys equals true. You don't really need to know what the latter ones do, but the optimization preference on the size is one of the core options that we have to make this even smaller. So if we do that, and again, it might take a bit longer, a few seconds, here we go, it's ready. Then we go to less than a megabyte. The debug symbols don't matter but this maze application now compiling into 924 kilobytes fantastic but that's as far as we can go with a dotnet sdk and a dotnet compiler to move further we need to go into michael's other project b flat which you can install with winget if you want you can install b flat by using winget install b flat i already have it and the moment you install it you have a sort of a Go-like, it sort of tries to be a Go-like experience um, of a C-sharp compiler. If you want to know more about B-flat, there's going to be a link in the description and I will definitely make a video if you want me to. So if you want to know more about that, leave a comment down below and please do let me know. But basically B-flat tries to remove or basically be opinionated about what should be and shouldn't be uh, in the tooling. And you can do some really cool stuff. I'm going to leave that for the dedicated B-flat video. But what we can do is basically we can have a native AOT compilation process with B-flat. In fact, I can go here and say B-flat build. And it is going to build, as you can see, an executable and the debug symbols directly here. So if I say run minimaze, I still have my game. And this game is not compiled with a .NET command. It's compiled with the b flat command very very cool i'm going to make more on that in the future now size wise on its own by default this is 1.1 kilobytes but i can actually pass some flags to change that namely i can say uh, build uh, os no stack trace data the same way i had the project no stack trace flag and the no globalization is the same as the invariant and the no exception messages and if i do that and i compile then as you're going to see, I'm getting an application of 883 kilobytes. Again, everything is running. Nothing is broken. Really, really cool. Now, the interesting thing about B-flat is it allows you to have three options when it comes to runtime libraries. You can have the full runtime library of .NET, its own minimal implementation called zero lib of B-flat, and then none. To use zero lib, which is what allows us to make this even smaller, we can say B flat build OS STD lib zero. And if I do that, as you can see, we go from whatever 800 and whatever it was to nine kilobytes because we ditched all those libraries we don't need and the game still works absolutely fine. Nine kilobytes. Now, the interesting thing about this executable is that if I take it and I put it in an hex editor, I can search for things like load library and get proc access and those exist in here because what's going to happen is that bflat by default resolves pinvol calls to a couple of libraries lazily instead of statically so we can actually change that to make them statically invoked to do that we just pass the two commands gdi32 and user32 however we actually have to resolve the gdi's location now i've put it into the helpers a directory over here to make my life easier so i can do this 
And as you can see now, I go from nine kilobytes to eight kilobytes, saving a kilobyte because of that change. Now, how else can we save some space? Well, actually we've been compiling for um, x64 all this time, but what if we compile for x32? So if I change the location of this to the 32 version and I pass down a couple of uh, different flags, like no pine, no debug info, no architecture, x86 then we go to six point something or seven kilobytes again still everything is running absolutely fine and we keep trimming now the last thing we're going to do is we're actually going to change the default b flat linker to something called crinkler and you don't really need to know what it is but you should know that when you create native code usually you create an object file and then that object file is not runnable it just contains a code and then we convert that into an executable so we're going to have very much the same experience here now the first thing we need to do for all this to work is to pass the x option over here but because we need the object file we're going to run the same command but with c in the end over here and as you can see now i have this object file with 12 kilobytes here i still don't have an exe that doesn't really exist i just have the object file and i need to turn this into an exe now a bit of a long-winded one but the last thing i need to do is call crinkler pass all of my data in it the user 32 lib the kernel 32 the gdi 32 and the zero lib native object file and with everything it's going to generate the final file and the final file size is 1.9 kilobytes and this is a working application as you can see over here is this crinkled version and it just works exactly as it did now why am I making this video? Are you actually going to use any of this? And realistically, no. But see what is possible. We can make two or less than two kilobyte graphical games in C Sharp. And even though it's not your usual C Sharp or your usual compilation process, tooling is getting insane. And I'd really like B flat to actually get more attention because you can do some really, really cool stuff with it. So if you want a video about B flat, please let me know in the comments down below. Again, Mikhail's post is in the description. Go already check it out. It is an amazing initiative, amazing project, great things are coming out of that head. And I'm really, really looking forward to seeing what he can do next. But I wonder from you, what do you think about all this? Like, really what the hell leave a comment down below and let me know well that's all i have for you for this video thank you very much for watching and as always keep coding